Okay, moving on, two-handed backhand. Two-handed backhand, the other half of the most popular strokes for backhand. You got a one-hander, you got a two-hander. I'm gonna tell you some things about the two-handed backhand you might not have ever heard before. And we're gonna go over, the, again, three major things that people do wrong with their two-handed backhand and how we're gonna fix them. We're not gonna take the bad habits and tell you to get rid of them. We're gonna try to replace them with good habits. So let's first explain what this shot is, how it's hit, what it should look like. A two-handed backhand is just that. If you're a right-hander and you hit a right-handed forehand, that's your dominant arm, instead of hitting a one-handed backhand, you put your hand on the rack, hit a two-handed backhand. So I'm gonna demonstrate the two-handed backhand for you and show you what it looks like. And then I'm gonna break down these little things we need to get fixed, the three most common problems, okay? I'll explain those to you. That's what we're looking for. Again. Rock solid, steady. And I'm gonna show you how to get there. Okay? So that's basically what we're looking for. Is something like that. The way we're gonna get there, you want something with topspin that goes deep, that you can hit fairly hard, that goes in a high percentage of time, that goes in where you want it to go in. That's what we're looking at. So I'm gonna hit a couple more and actually get these to land in the court so you can see them from the other camera. So let's do that now here. Cross court. Now, right inside the baseline, that is so sweet. Okay, that's what we're looking for. Deep, clears the net by a mile, lands in where you want it to land in. Um, what's not to like about that, right? So that's what we're looking for. Now, most people, when they hit a two-handed backhand, let's all say it together at home too. They use the wrong grip, correct. Most people just take a continental grip here and they slap the other one right on top of it. And they like to use the wrists as a pinball flipper. So well, I get some power this way, right? Well, you're gonna get that power, but you're not gonna be able to guide it. You're not gonna be able to put the ball where you want because nobody in human history, I don't care who you are. I don't care if you were the best two-handed backhand player on the planet. I don't care if you're Nadal, I don't care if you're Djokovic. There is no way that they can consistently flip their wrists the same way every time and hit the ball in the same place where they want every time. Nobody can. It's not humanly possible, okay? There's certain fundamentals we have to obey. Can they do manipulate the ball in great ways? Absolutely, but they're using fundamentals to do it. See, they're not using trickery. They're just really super, super, super awesome at fundamentals. That's what the best players in the world do. They do the fundamentals better than anybody. So if you hit five backhands out in front in a row, they'll hit 105 backhands in front out in a row, out in front, okay? A really good at fundamentals, and that's what we're gonna talk about now. So let's go into the three big mistakes people make with the, the uh, two-handed backhand, the first one being the grip. Either one of two things, they go hand on hand with Continental, okay? So they can get that flippy, or they'll start sliding both hands over <laughs> and come low to high. And then they realize that doesn't work, and then they try to find somewhere in between, and eventually they end up somewhere with the Continental and somewhere with maybe a little bit of an Eastern here. But they end up getting flippy with the wrist. The way to hold the racket is either a Continental and an Eastern on top, and you only want your left hand, the, the opposite arm. So if you're righty, it'd be, you know, it'd be your right hand, lefty would be your right hand. You only want to be one grip different with the other hand. So if you've got a Continental on top, you only want to move as far as Eastern on the backhand side. You don't want a Continental and a semi-western. This is too far apart. It's too wiggly, okay? It's not together enough. If you are eastern, then you want, don't want to go any farther than semi-western. And that's a very popular grip, was an eastern backhand with the right hand and a semi-western with the left hand. Very, very popular two-handed grip. Me, I'm an eastern guy. I go continental eastern, okay? Usually, most of the time, okay? Um, so that's the first thing. What does this allow us to do? Again, it puts our contact point further out in front. This guy is behind the racket. That's the first thing, and then I'm gonna show you something amazing after this, okay? So now we've got the right grip. With the Continental, look at that. We can't get it out in front. This is too weak. It doesn't support the ball, okay? It doesn't support your hand. So we wanna be more Eastern. 
And so, since the and plus, since if we go continental, continental up here uh, uh, on our grip, most people are going to hit it back here and they're going to get flippy. That's the, so the problem with the grip is it tends to move our contact point back and we tend to get flippy with the wrist, which is what we don't want to do. We want, in my case, continental and an eastern, it moves my contact point forward, okay? So that I'm up here when I contact the ball. Now there's things I can do to the ball. I can manipulate the ball up here, okay? Or if you've got an eastern and a semi-western, you can manipulate. Again, we're strong out here. Now, what does this remind you of? Okay, we're gonna talk about this first problem here. The grip, we're out in front. What does this remind you of? Maybe a forehand? <laughs> okay, which leads us to the second problem that people have with the two-handed backhand. They're using two hands, but they're using it in the wrong way. They're trying to, a two-handed backhand correctly should be hit with the left hand as mostly dominant and the right hand as mostly guiding the ball. And I'm gonna prove it, okay? So if anyone was saying, oh no, no, you use them equal. No, you don't. And I'm gonna prove why not in a second. But just remember this kind of looks like a forehand because it's gonna to relate to a couple things we, we, we talked about in a second. So what we wanna do is about 80, 90% power from the left hand and this guy is just some guidance. He's, he's just the little guidance system. He straightens out the racket. He helps us time our contact point. He helps us guide the racket because we're not left-handed. If we were left, if we were ambidextrous, and if you are ambidextrous, I would highly recommend you just hit two forehands, honestly. Nobody talks about it, but that's what I would do if I was left-handed and right-handed, I could do them both the same. I would hit two forehands and you wouldn't even have to watch this video, <laughs> okay? You wouldn't even have to watch a backhand video. But most people get a little too much power here or they do just the opposite. They'll swing with this and they'll try to guide with the left. And again, what does that lead to? We pull here and we snap the wrist here. Now we still got no accuracy because we've moved our contact point back and we're flipping with the left hand. What we wanna do is keep that nice good grip we've got, in my case, Continental Eastern, in a lot of people's cases, uh, Eastern backhand, semi-Western with the left hand. Keep it out front, okay? and we want to be swinging with this hand. The way I prove that that's where the power comes from is I have my students, and I do this on a daily basis with students, especially if we're teaching them to try to backhand, I just have them grab the racket normally, and you can do this at home too, and grab it with your grip, say Eastern and Semi-Western, okay? And what we're gonna do is take this hand, and we're just gonna hold it with a couple fingers. First, I'm gonna ask them to swing the racket, and it's gonna be a little flippy because they're not left-handed, so they don't have the control yet. But then I ask them to just use these two fingers and thumb, and I toss the ball up and I tell them, okay, I'm gonna drop this ball, you hit a two-handed backhand with just those two fingers on the racket. And they can do it. And I'll show the other camera angle. I'm gonna use one finger and one thumb, just to demonstrate it can be done, okay? If you didn't know I just had one finger and one thumb, you would never tell, be able to tell that that was the case. I just zipped one in right there, okay? This is the power. This is the guide, power, guide, okay? There's a little bit, a little bit of control coming through, but I'm not pulling with the right arm. You gotta get this pulling motion with the right arm out of your head. A two-handed backhand is swung as a forehand with this guy helping us as the guide to balance us out since we're not left-handed, that's all it is. So with the correct grip hitting out in front and making sure we're swinging with the left arm, there's only one thing left to do. Anyone know what that is? Well, there's two things left to do. The same thing we did on the one-handed backhand. And that's turn our shoulders, turn our back on our opponent, and get low. If I took this hand off, what does this look like? A forehand. If I put two fingers on, it's a two-finger, two-handed backhand. If I put the whole hand on, it's a full two-handed backhand. So we want the shoulder turned. We want to get low, high, low, high. High, low, high. Out in front, just like we did on the one-handed backhand. So let's demonstrate that. So let's go here. Toss, turn. High, low, high. And you want to practice doing these slow, too. Hit a couple really slow ones. You know, my little phrase I have, if you can't do it slow, you can't do it at all. Turn, high, low, high. What are we doing now? We're getting the ball out in front. Turned, high, low, high. That's right in the corner. And notice I'm getting a good turn. I'm not having to really power the ball much. I'm using my legs and the rotational torque of my body to power the ball. So I can hit it slow and smooth. I can hit it a little harder and smoother. But either way, I'm using fundamentals. 
a proper grip, hitting the ball out in front. The grip moves our contact point out in front, making sure that we turn our shoulders, make sure we're powering the shot with the left hand, the, or the non-dominant hand, and making sure we bend, go high, low, high. That puts the spin. Again, we clear the net by a mile, lands past the service line, lands in by plenty. What more do you want? Plus, since we're out in front, just like we are on the forehand, it's gonna be more accurate. That's why another reason a lot of people choose a two-handed backhand is because they are stronger with two hands, because they're more stable and they're a little more accurate, because they feel like they're more out in front like a forehand, okay? So those are the fundamentals of the two-handed backhand. And the th three big common mistakes people were making, again, to review, was the, the wrong grip, okay? The not hitting out in front and the not going low to high, okay? They were going high to low, just like the one-hander. And the turning, okay? Those are all related. So, now that we've got this two-hander in the can, I want you to make sure that you go out there and do some drop and hit drills, or have a friend drop them to you. You may think it may not be helping you, but if it's not a skill, then how come a good player can do it and a poor player can't? <laughs> it's not whether the ball is moving or not. It's whether you've got the fundamentals mastered, okay? So get out there, master those fundamentals, and we'll see you in the next video. Thank you.